and in a few minutes, Phil is picking me up. Ever since Phil and I filmed our mishap-filled tapas crawl live stream, this is not what people expected, and it's literally pouring with rain, I wanted to get away with him for a boys trip, because I've been feeling a bit of malienation. A term I hadn't heard until recently. So it seems that us men, as we get into middle age, are not very good at keeping up male relationships. Post-COVID, with fatherhood and work, it feels like maybe my friendships, particularly my male friendships, could do with a shot of life. Or, in this case, multiple bottles of red wine. <laughs> Good to see you. Right. So I decided to take my good mate on an all-expenses-paid trip to the town of Aro in the heart of Rioja, Spain's most famous wine country. Aro, capital del Rioja. During which I treat Phil to the most expensive glass of wine I've ever bought and the spiciest stuffed pepper he's ever tasted. That is spicy. <laughs> we arrived 10 minutes early. We did it. Oh. So it is true that you actually don't know much about Aro, right, where we are. This is the best concentration of wineries within walking distance. But we're going to drink a lot of wine. Venga, let's go. Can you carry this, Phil? James has brought this secret little <laughs> bag with him, but he's not telling me what's in it. We kick off with a visit to one of the most famous wineries in Spain, Cune. <laughs> Six litre bottle. They got a serious shot of international fame in 2013 when one of their wines was named the best in the world. Number one wine of the year, the Cune Imperial Grand Reserva from Rioja. It smells good, it smells good. Yeah. It smells good. It smells enticing. enticing. It's, you know, it's 10 past 11. I'm getting towards a time where I might, well, you might, be allowed might have a glass. <laughs> 2004 Imperial Grand Reserva. It's made in these barrels here was named the best wine in the world. Yeah, okay, Imperial Grand Reserva, sounds good. 2004. 2004. Best wine in the world. In the world. The smell hits you. It's more intense wow. here. In this massive storage room, may not look like much today, but it was actually designed by Gustave Eiffel, the guy who built the Eiffel Tower. And they wanted a place without any columns or pillars. Now it stores 400 barrels of wine, some of the best stuff, the Grand Reserva, that, that Imperial that I've mentioned. In the 19th century, there was a bug called Phylloxera. It wiped out the vines throughout Europe, especially the vines in France. And the French love their wine. And so they couldn't grow wine. Uh, and so what they did is they came south. This bug hadn't arrived in Spain yet, and they started growing the wine here. At some point, the French left, and thus Rioja got that head start, got the investment, got the marketing sorted so it could launch itself on the world as the first really well-known Spanish wine region. Merci beaucoup. Okay, so we've come down to what's called the cemetery where the oldest bottles are kept from the winery uh, and they're just all covered in mold. It's incredible, the smell is so intense. And what we have here behind this kind of cage are the oldest of the oldest from the late 19th century, the 1880s, right up to, what, well, the 1940s, these bottles of wine will only be opened under three conditions. One, that 200 years have passed since the founding of the winery, so that would be in 2079. And two, that the people who signed this contract that maps out the wine in here are still alive. This was signed in 1979, there's only three left. And three, that they find the key to this cage, but the key was thrown in the Ebro River right alongside. So these wines will never be opened or drunk, ever. Lock me up, throw away the key, <laughs> bring me a corkscrew and some ham. Are you thirsty, Phil? Hungry and thirsty. Hungry and thirsty. A man of simple needs. Yes. But many needs. <laughs> Salud. 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 Salud, Phil. If you suck in the wine, two things will happen. One, you look pretentious, but two, you bring air in, which helps bring out the aromas and the flavors of the wine. You need contact with oxygen to do that. So you once told me, and it was a great comment, I remember this, wine isn't pretentious, people are pretentious. Ah. I remember that, it's very clear. Drink the wine, enjoy it, but don't necessarily make a big song and dance about it. After this, yeah, to the wine bars. Yes, let's to the go. wine bars, yes. Benga, let's go. <laughs> you, look like mysterious a, bag. <laughs> you look like a drug dealer. I have a wine theory that Phil agrees with that if you're in any Spanish bar, waiters are not trained, sadly, to talk about wine. If you ask any waiter about any wine on the wine list, what will they say, Phil? Está muy bueno, eh? Está muy bueno. 
That's the only thing that will be said. It's done we went on. Great. So they're all good. Where do we go from there? But this one is good, Phil. I'll be the judge of that. That's easy. That's what I do. This will not make it taste better. This will make it smell. This will bring out the aromas. You're not convinced. It's not for me, you know. I think I'm so obsessed with Rueda and, and, and even Albarino, which are just sort of crisper and zestier. And this is a little bit flowery. Mm. And it feels like maybe I'm drinking like a candle. I don't you know. should write for wine magazines. Yeah, I'm sorry. Throughout Spain, if you want to visit a winery and drink the wine, so often you have to do the whole tour. And that can get really boring. Sometimes you just want to drink the wine. And that's what you can do in Ado. Wineries were built all around the train station. Classic, historic wineries like this one, Muga, that was founded in the 1930s. Literally, you can walk from winery to winery, and each winery has its own wine bar. I asked for questions on in Instagram about Rioja, the region, about the wine, but also about Phil. Okay. This wasn't a question sent in. We will get to some of those, but there, but I did Google questions when you're, you know, bonding with someone. <laughs> Question, <laughs> questions to ask. <laughs> How old were you, Phil? <laughs> <laughs> when you stop sleeping with stuff, stuffed animal. Mysterious little bag. And sitting right behind us were the lovely owners of the winery <laughs> from the Muga family. <laughs> The wine here may be world famous, but the vibe is wonderfully small town. There's another one. We just walked one minute and there is another winery with a wine bar. This is how close everything is. It's literally walking distance. <laughs> We're going in here. So we are drinking Phil 2017 Roda One. Yes. Very famous wine. Are you ready? It's good, I think. Down the hatch. You can feel the temperature drop as we walk down into this underground cellar. Romantic or sinister. <laughs> this is one of the newest wineries in Aro. This underground tunnel, this cave that leads out to the river Ebro to give it freshness is over a hundred years old. And these guys are working, cleaning bottles, emptying bottles, filling them with wine. It's really good, it's smooth. We're just gonna bring the candle close to the ah, <laughs> Is there anything Phil eats that James wouldn't eat? What do you not eat? Nothing. Done, rapid fire. Which is better, Duero or Rioja? So this is a question about the two most famous wine regions in Spain. Neither is better, depends on your taste. Ribera de Duero is usually more fuller bodied and darker, but that's, a, that's an oversimplification. I've just been to Rioja. I saw Rioja and Crianza on the menu. What's the difference? I feel like we answered that. Rioja is a wine region. Crianza is how long a particular wine is aged for. When did you last cry in front of another person? <laughs> or, by, or, by, or by yourself? You got the bag? Got the bag. I'm never letting go of this bag. <laughs> got the goods. Gracias. Hasta luego. Next wine bar. Can you handle it? I don't know if I can handle it, but we're going to find out. Let's try this one. Rioja Alta. Maybe it's the wine flooding my veins, or maybe I'm just a generous kind of guy. But I'm about to spend more money than I, or probably you, have ever spent That's on amazing. a glass of wine. Oh, wow. This is the place, man. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? Done. Wine. Four euros versus 20 euros. That's a good wine. That's a good wine. Yuka, that's a good that's wine. That's a good wine. There's a lot going on there. Chocolatey and sort of strong, but very easy to drink, I think. I think yeah. you could drink quite a bit of that. Okay. But this... I'll take the four euro one. Really? Genuinely. Really? Genuinely. Really? Yeah. I'm a big picture guy. Okay, you are. What if we ordered a, a glass of the 51 euro glass? I think, I think it's an important thing that we do here. I think we need to do that to get the full picture. I would regret lying in bed tomorrow night in Madrid thinking I could have just spent 50 euros, which is a lot of money. Yeah. But that's in the context of life. Yeah. It's not a lot of money. Right? It's not, it's not, it's yeah. not. Perdona. Vamos a pedir una copa del 2001. Heart's racing a little bit. Vale, <laughs> chévere, Smell it first for me. Oh, it's it's earthy. Earthy. Yeah. Would it be weird to say mushroom? No, no, no. Yeah. That's earth. Yeah. Okay. I think that's a very good glass of wine. You could you could drink the whole bottle and it could it could sort of speak to you on a number of levels. But I, I here of these three glasses, 
genuinely would pick the four-year one. Hey, for all the wine geeks out there, I'm about to get into it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start with the, with the cheap stuff. It's nice. It's a nice Rioja. It smells like a Rioja. Taste, you know. It's a lovely glass of wine. This is 2004. Same year as the famous Imperial that we've heard about. Ooh. I smell sherry. I smell an aged quality. There's more going on. The first one is like, boom, lovely, delicious. This one is like, okay, I like that. The big guy. The burgundy glass. The big guy. Okay. Earth, you're right, Phil. Your, your palate is spot on. You are a great wine drinker in the making. And it, mushrooms, exactly, mushrooms. You're right. Can I take the camera? Because this feels personal. Wine isn't pretentious. People are pretentious. Here's the key of wine. Drink to your interest. If your interest is just like, oh, I like a glass of wine, get the four euro one. If your interest is like, oh my God, I've been studying wine, I'm curious about the region, I've been learning about the weather and things like that and how it affected it, drink the other one. There is no point in drinking above your level. It's a waste of money. The question is, what wine are we going to have at lunch now after this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not the house red. We're not going to the house red now. <laughs> Please, tell me what's There's in the bag. There's nothing in that bag. Please. Have I filled you with enough wine for the moment? Yeah. Can I feed you? Please do. Somebody feed Phil. There's a queue, bro. So we're in the most famous place in Ado for traditional cuisine. Venga, let's go. Yeah. So the idea here, Phil, is, is it off, not is it good? I know that. <laughs> That is muddy, it's not quite as smooth, it doesn't go down as easy as, as some of the other ones. I did an Instagram post about you and someone said, who is Phil and what does he do? Phil, go on. I've known James for about nine or 10 years, uh, but I also am a, a TV presenter presenting coverage of Spanish football here in Spain. I do also have a podcast, it's called The Spanish Football Podcast. It's about Spanish football, but also life in Spain as well. Check us out, we're everywhere with a leading, award-winning, number one podcast about Spanish football in English. Let us know in the comments, guys, how you would rate that elevator pitch. <laughs> Something on my mind is, is malienation. Is what? That's the thing when you do a video with James, he just throws this kind of shit at you. It's I'm 43. I am living in a country that I didn't go to university in or school in, COVID, work. Tell me about the health of your male friendships. I've got plenty of healthy male friendships, but I, I, live in, I live where I want to live, James. I'm very happy and content to live in Spain. I ask you, Phil, because sometimes I feel post-COVID, blah, 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 that I'm a little alienated. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Friends, male friends, you know, friendship communities. Do you feel this? Malienated, no, I, 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 I don't. I've got quite a lot of male friends and we, we talk quite a lot and when we can we meet up so How yeah. often do you meet up? Uh, I don't know, maybe once a month or so. I work at weekends so it's not easy. I don't feel alienated, but if you do, just give me a ring man and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll go for a drink or something. I'm going to be really honest here that um, Phil is a tough critic when it comes to Spanish food and Phil when we made our live stream together I got some critique from people who said why would you go out with someone who doesn't love Spanish food but actually I find your perspective refreshing because like Spain Revealed is not all about hey oh my god it's all amazing like oh my god every bite is incredible. This lamb is well cooked it's tender it's soft but it is it is lacking for me in flavor. My heritage is is Greek we know our way around the lamb. Are the melons better in Greece? Yes, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> when are you going to give me my present? There's clearly a present for me in the magic bag. I'm assuming this is for me. This is a present for me. I feel like it's a present for the world. <laughs> I feel like it's a, it's a gift to everyone. Okay. Oh, taxi. Oh, taxi. Okay, let's go. Class or what? This is good. Lovely. Lovely. You take me to the best places, James. Is that you and is that me? Do you want the window or...? I'll take this bedroom here. <laughs> oh, there's another bedroom. Oh. If you've had a big morning in Spain, drinking wine, having lunch, whatever it may be, four or five o'clock, hit your apartment. You must have a siesta, otherwise you're never gonna make it through. That siesta can be no longer than 45 minutes, one hour max. If you go over one hour and 30, you're never gonna make it out later on. So that's the plan now. Then we're gonna explore Ado later. <laughs> Time to 
you open the bag? Oh, let's go. I'm so excited and a little bit scared and it's, you know, God knows what inside. Because it's inside this bag. What have you brought me? Oh, you brought me more wine. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Best wine in the world. Wow. How cold is it? It's 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 acceptably cold. <laughs> Ole. Hey, Phil, do the honors. Doesn't smell earthy, doesn't smell mushroomy, it doesn't smell like sherry. It sort of smells like a better version of the Five euro one. Yes. You know? yes. Salud. Salud. Amigo, eh? Que detalle, eh? Que detalle. Oh yeah, that is on point. You're right. It's, it's on point. Yeah. It's rich. It's strong. It's crisp. It's fresh. Yeah, it is. It's an 18 year old wine, and it yeah. tastes like a fresh salad. This is just like pure enjoyment, and we're not even eating anything. And usually, I have to eat something with wine, and here we just. We're just getting stuck into this bottle. You, me, an annoying flyer flying around there. <laughs> Flat, and that's it. Is, is it the company? <laughs> cool, what's on the telly? <laughs> yeah, Netflix and chill, Netflix and chill. But as much as I'd like to settle in for an evening of Netflix and chill with Phil and the world's best wine, we need to eat. So we head into Aro's historic center and hit La Herradura, a horseshoe-shaped tangle of streets famous for its tapas scene. Aro, capital del Rioja. People have asked, what's the difference between Aro and Logroño? It's the capital of the region of La Rioja, the administrative capital. And what is Aro then? Aro is the capital of the wine producing aspect of La Rioja. The emotional the capital, yeah, the yeah. emotional capital. Logroño is a big city. I mean, it's 100,000 people more or less live there. Here, there's 10,000. How do you know all this? Because I, I like Spain, I like, I like studying its cities. Really? Don't you love it, Phil, how in small Spanish cities, people come out in the evening, you know? Look, this is like, this is idyllic. But even in big Spanish cities, I feel like this happens as well. Just you don't notice it so much because it's diluted with everyday life as well. But even, true. even in Madrid, this, this, this kind of happens as well. But here, in a small place, you, you notice it and you feel it and you can enjoy it a bit more. All right, where, do, where are we going? <laughs> I don't know, I'm following you. <laughs> Hola, perdona. La herredura es como una zona de tapas, no? Es esto. Beethoven. So we have to go down to this place called Beethoven, yes. which they said is famous for its pimiento relleno picante. I've liked everything you've given me, of course. Just more of like a... That is spicy. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, I can't eat that. Really? Yeah. It's too hot? Yeah, yeah. Famous spicy. It's right. really spicy. It's, it's really spicy. It's, really good. It's immediately really spicy. It's really good. That could be heated up a little more, but that's hot. That's good. Nah, oh, bro, I'm having like an allergic reaction. I'm just sitting here. I can't stop sweating. Don't put this in. This is in the video. No, this is don't drama. Put this in. Don't put this in. I'll put this in. What I love is you go and you're like, ponme una copa de vino tinto. I'll have a glass of red wine. And they're like, which winery? She was like, we've got all of them. Yeah. So I'm drinking. What do you go for? A Martinez La Cuesta. I'm and having Phil's, a beer. Phil's having a beer. I had the best wine in the world, man. There's no, there's no coming back from that. Ahí está. Ahí está. Gracias. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. People are nice here, right? People are very nice People here. People are super yeah. nice here. I wake Phil before dawn. I've read that a few kilometers north of the town, there's a sacred location where Aro's annual wine battle takes place. I'm not sure how Phil would feel about being doused in wine for several hours, so happily we're here on a quieter morning. <laughs> <laughs> the things I make you do. This was unexpected. <laughs> Pretty impressive, huh? 
very impressive. Pretty impressive that we made it up as well. Yeah. <laughs> so I brought you up here, Phil, because this man up here, yeah? San Felices, is the patron saint of Ado. Ah. He's practically like a patron saint of wine. Yes. Last night, as I was lying in bed, digesting physically and mentally everything, <laughs> I was reflecting on the fact that when I travel, I sometimes kind of make a mistake. I, I want everything to be ideal. I want the ideal package. I want the ideal wine, the ideal food, the ideal views. You know, yesterday the food was good, but it's really about the wine here. That's what you come for. And it's just spectacular. I mean, we go into the tapas bars last night and we say, I want a glass of Rioja. And they're like, which winery? That is the depth of wine culture here, right? That's kind of what you come for. Yeah, you come here not just to drink great wine. You can do that in a lot of places, but here you, you get the essence of what it means to produce wine. You see people whose whole lives yeah. are around producing what comes into the bottle and what we see and what, what's in our, our glass. So yeah, come for the unbelievably good wine. Stay for the unbelievably spicy stuffed pepper. All right, guys, <laughs> we'll see you in the next video. Ciao. <laughs> The world's finest wine at 7.30 a.m. It's really cold, isn't it? <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>